Good morning and welcome, everyone. We have a beautiful day, it sounds like. Uh, so hopefully you have an opportunity to enjoy the blessings that the Lord brings your way today. Uh, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you invite us to trust in you for our salvation. Deal with us not in the severity of your judgment, but by the greatness of your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, the Old Testament lesson is from the 25th chapter of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marl, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The epistle is from the fourth chapter of Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but about everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Rejoice in the Lord greatly. 
that now at length you have re revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that, they am, not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who were invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. But the wedding hall, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guest, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, mountain experiences can be a wonderful part of life. I've, had, I've been blessed to have a number of experiences in life that have happened in mountains. Now, it was uh, two weeks ago that I shared in worship one of those stories where I took a trip to Colorado and I was able to be up on a mountainside at an elevation of about 10,000 feet, night sky, with no clouds, and be able to observe the night sky with exceptional clarity and brilliance. That was a remarkable experience. I want to share with you another one today. In 1981, so this gives you an idea how old I am, I was hiking in the Great Smoky Mountains as part of a special biology class and a special biology study. Now, the group that I was with, we had to hike up this steep mountainside to get to a special elevation and location where supposedly this one particular plant only grew. So we made our way up there and got our sample and then had to climb back down the steep terrain. Well, I was very happy to get back down to the van as it had been a challenging morning of hiking. It had to be at least an hour hike to get up and an hour hike to get back down. Well, as I came around the corner of the van, I noticed, parked not too far away, was another van that looked remarkably familiar to me. And it happened to have Ohio license plates and I'm down in, I don't know if I was on the Tennessee or North Carolina side, it doesn't matter. Well, out of curiosity, I walk that way a little bit, and there's some people on, around the van, and I'm thinking, boy, they look awful familiar. And I walk a little bit closer. Here, it's my neighbor, two doors down. 
nothing like being multiple states away, hiking in the mountains, and come down and run into your neighbors. Uh, it was nice to be able to have a brief chat with them. Being long, a long way from home, but experiencing someone familiar. I think the Lord at times uses mountains in a similar way for us. There can be great challenges that we are facing in life, and as you face those challenges in life, it feels like you are navigating very difficult terrain, like trying to climb up a mountainside. You can feel like you're exhausted, and you're wondering, why in the world am I having to do this? You can feel like you're away from people and maybe even isolated from the Lord. When you're going through a time like that, it's easily to get that feeling of isolation. However, the Lord is at work doing something special as you are going through an experience like that. You may not realize at the time what the Lord is doing, but he is doing something special. While you are just trying to navigate, well, the thicket of the day. (laughs) You know what I mean? Some days it's just all you can do to just make through the difficulties of that day. And in this whole process, the Lord is preparing something special, and it may be even something familiar to you, but it's definitely going to be a blessing. Here are some of the mountain experiences in the Lord's narrative of bringing salvation to his people. Maybe you remember the story of having the Lord having Elijah climb a mountainside and go into a cave. And while he is on that mountainside and in the cave, there is all of these storms that happen. There's an earthquake, there's a fire, there's a big wind. But then there comes the gentle breeze. And in this gentle whisper, the Lord speaks to Elijah. And he speaks to him a word of encouragement and a reminder that he is not alone. That the Lord has prepared other faithful people for him that he can connect with, that he can be together with them. And they journey as brothers and sisters in Christ. Another one is Moses. He had the opportunity to climb up Mount Sinai and there he talked with the Lord and the Lord provided him with the Ten Commandments and other valuable insights for Moses to be able to lead the Israelites through the wilderness. Now he never did get them into the promised land. That's a whole other story. He had to turn the reins over of leadership to Joshua and then Joshua carried that out. In the Gospels, we frequently find the Lord, Jesus Christ, on a mount or a mountainside or some other elevated location. Jesus was tempted by the devil when he was high on a mountainside. Jesus preached a special sermon on a mountainside, and we call it the Sermon on the Mount. That's where we get the Beatitudes and a lot of the other uh, teachings of Jesus. Jesus gave a special glimpse of his work on the Mount of Transfiguration. And Jesus spent time in prayer alone on a mountainside. He would get tired. You guys ever get tired in life? Yeah? Sometimes it's really important to take that time to be alone with the Lord. It's like being up on a mountain. You get that special time of prayer, that special time of devotion with the Lord in his word that he comes to you in a special way, speaks to your heart, speaks to your mind, and he energizes you. Jesus did that and it's wise for us to do the same. And Jesus gathered with his disciples for a special time of prayer and preparation on the Mount of Olives, and Jesus was crucified at Golgotha, 
also translated as the place of the skull, known as Skull Hill. Not so much a mountain. If you happen to take a trip to Jerusalem or look it up online, Golgotha or Skull Hill, you'll see it's just an elevation outside of town. But it was a special one. It was right along a road. So everyone traveling the road would see. It was a high place that the Romans used for all to see. So through the years, the church has referred to it as a mountain. It's what we sang. Come to uh, Calvary's holy mountain, this special mountain of salvation. Mountains are an important part of the Lord's story of saving people from sin. I think you can reduce all of these experiences to two concepts. One is a special time alone with God. We all need that at times. And the Lord promises that he is going to meet us as we gather and call upon his name. And second, is there's a special time of provision by the Lord. You can see God doing something special, something holy, something satisfying, something that is needed that only God can do. That's an important concept there. In our text from Isaiah 25, verses 6 through 9, it says, On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will, and then it goes on and gives us multiple things that the Lord will do on this mountain. This is the mountain of the Lord that he is talking about. Now, if you read the context and go back and start in Isaiah chapter 24, and see what is the Lord talking about as he brings forward this text that we have today, you may find a disturbing set of circumstances. What are you going to find? The world is experiencing devastation. Hmm, sound familiar? The world is experiencing devastation, and you're going to see various kinds of devastation if you read that text. And you will even find that it says there that the devastation is being done at the hands of the Lord for a purpose. Well, if there isn't an unsettling text in the Bible, I don't, if that isn't an unsettling text, I don't know what is. The Lord is doing this, but he has a purpose. So it's important, I think, for us to remember that there are two sides of the work of the Lord. There is the judgment side, and then there is the mercy and the grace side. That in the midst of judgment and devastation, God provides this mountain that has a special purpose. That we come to him in faith, and he provides a place of refuge. You know, there's a reason why churches are called sanctuaries. You guys all know a sanctuary is a special place you go for refuge. And it's very much a biblical term. A church is a sanctuary because this is a special place that the Lord has provided for us to meet him in a special way. And he is going to do special work here. Hmm. A special place to take a reprieve from the devastation and chaos that's going on in the world around us. And on this mountain, there is a special feast. It's one of those things I was almost tempted to say, we're having communion today because of the text that we have. <laughs> this is the special feast. Our Lord Jesus Christ, but this special feast is more than that. As if you could say, how could we have more than communion? Communion is a special way that we receive the Lord, but this is simply all the provision that the Lord provides for us in his word, in his sacraments, but also his people. And as we gather together, we receive his grace and his mercy. This is a feast that is abundant and beyond measure. And it is on this mountain that broken hearts are healed. 
the broken spirits are healed. The God provides comfort and compassion. It's easy to have our hearts broken in this world, isn't it? When we have loss of family member, loss of a job, whatever it might be. Uh, Anybody a little worn out with change about now with COVID-19? Holy moly. This is just crazy. But it's what we got to do, right? Sometimes you're having to deal with change you don't want to do. Sometimes we need a little compassion. The Lord's compassionate with us and he calls us to be compassionate with one another. And it is on this mountain that sadness is turned to joy so that people on this mountain will express gladness and rejoicing. Uh, On this mountain, the Lord has saved his people and we have great reason to rejoice. In the midst of all the chaos, do you guys feel like you've been blessed by the Lord and blessed in your life? I would hope so. The Lord has provided, and in very special ways, sometimes we lose sight of it because at times like this, we're not being able to do all the things that we think we have to do. We don't necessarily have to do everything, do we? Yeah. But the Lord provides what we need, comfort of heart, comfort of spirit, provides us with forgiveness, family, brothers and sisters in Christ, and so much more. This is an amazing mountain. It's a place that you can go to be alone with God, which is important, And he promises that he is going to meet you there and provide words of direction and hope and a reminder that you are not alone. And at the same time, this is a place that you are going to receive hope and something special and probably more than what you expect. It is going to be filled with overflowing blessings. The Lord's Mountain is a place that you are going to find abundance that is hard to explain. It's life-changing, it's life-empowering, and you experience thankfulness beyond measure. So isn't that kind of weird? You get to be alone with the Lord. At the same time, you get to be surrounded by all of the other people that he's gathered here with us. (laughs) The Lord. We live in a world that seems to be experiencing various forms of devastation. The Lord of hosts provides this special mountain of good news and hope and provision, and Jesus is the mountain of the Lord. So let us rejoice and be glad in the salvation that he provides for all people who will come to this mountain, this mountain of salvation and provision. He provides the best of food and the finest of wines. Anybody going out for dinner today? Nobody's going out for dinner today? Seriously? I'm going out for dinner. I imagine we had a couple of people that had some special uh, dinners yesterday. We're going to have them in our prayers as we have Harry and Kathy Roberts celebrating their 50th anniversary. Now, isn't that something special to celebrate? 50 years together as husband and wife? Absolutely. Absolutely. We had Jim and Patty Rutzloff celebrating their 33rd anniversary yesterday. Rarely do we have two on the same day that we actually get to pray for them on the day of the anniversary. That was special. And then uh, Dick and Mary Ann Crouch, I just inadvertently missed them last night, but we're going to have them in the prayers as well. 56 years together. I tell you, I assume that all of them had a special meal. Special meal, remembering the blessings that the Lord has brought their way, the times that they've been able to experience, the great memories that they have, but also realizing the Lord has been with them every step of the way. 
Not that every day has been an easy day because sometimes you have some really big challenges in life. I overheard somebody say the other day that uh, if you think marriage is easy, you've got the wrong idea. (laughs) There are some really great challenges, but what is even better is the blessings are greater than the challenges. And we have the Lord with us every day. The Lord provides us with resurrection and new life. And it is something that lasts for all eternity. He comforts us in our time of sorrow and he provides each of us the name that is above all names. That is, he puts on you the name of Jesus Christ, that you are a Christian, that you are a child of God, that you are holy and precious in his sight. So let our hearts be filled with gladness and thankfulness and rejoicing. This mountain, it is different than the world. (laughs) It is different than what is happening in the rest of the world. This is a special place. And I pray that this message has been a mountaintop experience for you as you hear the clear message of what Jesus has done and continues to provide for you day in and day out. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us rise and confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, For our standard offering announcement, we have our plates uh, at the front uh, of the sanctuary or in the entryway in the back. You can also mail your contribution into the church if you would prefer to do that or use one of the two online giving options that we have on our website at stmarknt.org. Let us pray. Gracious Holy Father, we thank you for all of the blessings that you've brought to us in our life, especially for having your word faithfully given to your people and recorded in such a way that it's been passed down through the generations to us so that we are able to use that word to read it, to understand the extent of your love in Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for what he did for us on Golgotha, on Mount Calvary. What he did to forgive us of our sins, and especially we thank you for that glorious resurrection that we especially remember on Easter, but it's part of our life every day. And Lord, we thank you for those opportunities that we have that we can be like Jesus and come to you in times of prayer and devotion and you promise to meet us there to strengthen us, to nurture us, to encourage us and empower us for the challenges that come before us in our life. And Lord, we lift up to you all of those people that we have on our health concern list today, Mike Phillips, Dick Dewar, Mike O'Connor, Leroy Profrock, Nina Wood, John Martinez, Philip James, Sandy Haynes, Vicki Weiss, Shirley Allen, Chris Finley, Marcia Neary, Kurt Yeager, Joe Della Valley, Alan Volker, Amelia Della Valley, Nelson Goodrich, Ruth Hacker, John Eckel, Jim Stowitzki, Laura Russell, Jen Calandra, 
Laura Phillips, Cloyd and Shirley Snyder, Ron Ball, Emily Crane, John Hacker Jr., Don Schneider, Eugene Zem, Marlene Sybil, Gail Burdick, Barb Young, Charlotte Lyons, James Lort, Loretta Levan, Ashley Walk Wood, and Sharon Monti. Sharon will be having surgery tomorrow. And we ask you, Lord, to be with her in a special way, that you would protect her from all harm and danger as she enters into and goes through this surgery. And Lord, we ask you to be with her as she recovers, that you would have her heal rapidly and in a healthy manner. And Lord, we lift up to you all of these people that are on our health concern list. You know what is their special need today. And we ask you to bring healing to them of both body and soul. And Lord, we lift up to you the family and friends that mourn the loss of Lyle Hoffmeister, a longtime member here of St. Mark, as he died on October 7th. We ask you, Lord, to bring comfort, strength, and wisdom to the family and friends that mourn this loss within their lives. And Lord, we lift up to you a prayer of celebration and thanksgiving. As Harry and Kathy Roberts are celebrating their 50th, and Jim and Patty Rutzloff are celebrating their 33rd, and Dick and Marianne Crouch are celebrating their 56th wedding anniversaries. We thank you for the many years that you've given to all three of these couples. And we ask you, Lord, to bestow many more blessings upon them. We thank you for the love that you've placed in their hearts and their love for one another. May they cherish it each and every day. And help us, Lord, to cherish our lives and our families. That, it, that we consider them to be a blessing from you. And Lord, we ask you to remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We're going to close singing, Go Tell It on the Mountain. And you might say, Pastor, aren't you pushing Christmas a little early? Well, I don't know. I, hopefully you don't mind with the theme being mountains. It just made sense that we're going to do this. So let us sing, Go Tell It on the Mountain.